Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? <laughs> so my name is Devon Rodriguez. I'm from New York City. Anybody from New York City out there? Let's go, New York. Thank you to Adobe for inviting me to talk about my life and my work. I'm so honored to be here. So my story began in the South Bronx. Anybody from the Bronx out there? Let's go. <laughs> okay, so I grew up in a little neighborhood called Mott Haven. And I always had a pencil in my hand, always. I was always into art my whole entire life. I would get in trouble for covering my whole entire notebook with just drawings. And my teacher would tell my mom, like, can you tell him to stop drawing all over the notebook? And I was always around, like, all the creative kids. And a lot of the creative kids in the Bronx during middle school were into graffiti. So I used to go with them to the art store and buy all this spray paint. And I used to, like, tag walls all over the Bronx. and. You know, my grandma used to be so mad, but I was just obsessed with it. <laughs> and then um, I got arrested when I was 14 years old. So after getting arrested, I knew that I needed a different avenue for art. I didn't want to, you know, be in trouble. I just wanted to become an artist. So I applied to the High School of Art and Design, but I got declined because my drawings, honestly, were not good at all. Like, the portfolio requirements were to do 10 to 15 pieces of um, different subject matter, like portraits, still lives, figures, cityscapes, landscapes, and uh, to use a variety of media, like watercolor, acrylic, charcoal, graphite. But I didn't even know what various media even meant, so I just grabbed a pencil and some Crayola crayons and started drawing, and then obviously wasn't good enough, and I got denied. So then I went to my zone high school um, called Samuel Gompers, and this was like one of the worst high schools in the South Bronx. Like the graduation rate was low, the violence was high, and, but I met this one teacher named Jeremy Harper, and he ran the art program, and I told him like, hey, I didn't want to be here. I wanted to be at Art and Design High School. And he was like, well, show me your portfolio. And so I showed him my portfolio, and he was like, these drawings absolutely suck. Like, of course, <laughs> of course you didn't get in. He was like, if I reviewed this portfolio, I personally would have denied you, like, right away. So, so he was like, but don't be discouraged. I'm going to mentor you for six months, and I'm going to teach you the ropes, because he went to the School of Visual Arts, so he knew, like, what kind of portfolio they want to see. So he took me under his wing for six months, and you know I was drawing portraits, still lives, everything that I needed to do, and I was just very like diligent because um, I got humbled by art and design. So I was like serious this time, and so then um, I reapplied and I got accepted into the high school of art and design for tenth grade. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so he told me they only accept ninth graders or tenth graders, so you got one last chance. And I needed, I was like, I grew up in the hood, and I was like, I got to get out of here. Like, my art got to take me out. So I was so happy. Um, so then I came to art and design, and I, I came with a vengeance. And I was like, I got to practice so much because they didn't want me, so now I'm going to show them. <laughs> so this was a self-portrait that I did um, a year before I met Jeremy Harper. And he was like, let's do a portrait lesson after all your practice, and then um, I'm going to see, we could look at your improvement over a year. So this was a self-portrait that I did in Jeremy Harper's class. Um, and then this is part of my portfolio that I got accepted. And then the next year, I did another self-portrait assignment at the High School of Art and Design. So I did this one in pen and ink. And after this one, I noticed like, oh, I got like a nice progression, so I'm just going to continue doing self-portraits for the rest of my life, not only to document like my improvement, but also like the moment in time I was in life. So then this is 2013. I had joined the APR program where they taught us all you painting, so I did this self-portrait. Then 2014, that's when I graduated, and then... Um, this was me in high school. And I turned this, um, Jeremy Harper, I felt so appreciative of him because in 2010, he taught me about drawing people on the subway. And he was like, if you want to get good at doing portraits, then you got to do a variety of people. And New York City's a melting pot. So um, I remember he took me on the subway and he just started drawing this guy. And I was like, 
hold up, mister, that's kind of weird. Like, <laughs> I'm like, wait, you're not gonna tell him anything? And he's like, no, this is art, this is pure. Like, you know, if you wanna practice noses, you got a hundred different noses on the train. If you wanna practice lips, you got all kinds of thin and thick. And so, um, so I just followed his lead and I started to draw portraits on the subway. And then in high school, when I learned how to do oil paintings, um, I started to take photographs of people and do paintings of them. So these are just some strangers. I don't even know if they know that I painted them 10 years ago, but <laughs> maybe one day they'll find out. Yeah, so this was an art show. And I was just, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so I was just inspired by everyday people on the subway and I just wanted to draw everyone and anyone. So that, uh, I graduated high school 2014, and then I went to FIT for a year. And then, <laughs> shout out to FIT. And then um, I ended up dropping out a year after. My grandma was so, <laughs> my grandma was so like disappointed, but I was like, Abuela, listen, I'm gonna use Instagram to blow up. And she's like, no, guess so Instagram, get, get your degree, like, and I was like, anyway, so five years later, TikTok, I joined TikTok during the pandemic. Um, everyone was talking about TikTok, there was like these 16-year-old dancers becoming millionaires and getting into these mansions. I didn't want any of that, I just wanted attention on my work, and so I joined TikTok, I had 35 followers in the beginning, and I was just trying so many different formats, um, I was like, posting my commission work and I would get like 400 views and I was like, wow, I guess it's because nobody knows the person that I'm painting. So then I was like, let me do celebrities. I would get a thousand views and then I would do like varnish videos and I would get like 1500 and I tried 30 different ideas and it was all around a, a thousand to 2000 views and I was just like, I want millions of views, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> I want to get out the Bronx. So. Um, so then after trying so many different formats, I had this idea to draw people on the subway and I was like, let me just follow the thing that Jeremy Harper taught me. So I'm so grateful that I ended up getting rejected from the High School of Art and Design because not only did I like it lit a fire in me, but it also gave me this random idea to draw people on the subway from Jeremy Harper. So 2010, he gave me that idea. 2020, I started doing it. And I got this idea at like 2.50 in the morning. This is my notes that I have in my phone. And I wrote, TikTok viral idea, drawing people on the subway. And I didn't execute this idea until two weeks later. So August 10th, I did my first video, which was this one. And to my surprise, it ended up getting 5 million views. So with the 5 million views, I started off at 35 followers then I ended up having 100,000 followers from one video. And I was just like, wow, this is powerful. Like, and my friends were telling me like, oh, you made it, you made it. And I was like, no, I didn't make it until I do the second one and it works again. So I was like, please, I hope the second one works out, gets another 5 million views. I ended up getting 21 million views and another 300,000 followers. So now day two, drawing people on the subway, I have 400,000 followers. And I knocked on my grandma's door and I was like, Abuela, soy famoso, like, gotta be famous, like. And she was like, how do you know? And I was like, trust me, trust me, like, the algorithm. <laughs> so this was one of the videos. This was like one of my most viral videos. This one got 130 million views and just drawing people on the subway and, and getting their reactions. <laughs> so, so I noticed that the more interesting the person, the more views I would get. So I would try to find these interesting characters and all over New York City, you know, we have all kinds of people. And then after doing the subway reactions for three years, I wanted to learn the stories behind the portraits. So I wanted to do like a longer format where I go up to strangers on the street and then I ask them about their life story and as the portrait develops that I'm painting, their story develops at the same time. So I started that idea like a year ago and then 
that ended up going viral, and here's an example of that. Wow, your tattoos are so cool. My name is Devon. Nice to meet I'm a local you. artist. I would love to paint your portrait. Let's do it. Wow, I love your tattoos. What's your name and what's one of your biggest dreams in life? My name is Maxel Talena. One of my biggest dreams in life, honestly, if I could get paid doing literally almost anything creative. I love your tattoos, by the way. Thank so you. cool, like so well designed. I could tell, like, yeah. you're such an artist. I, I have a bunch of ones for like friends who passed away and stuff, and that, those are really the only thing meaningful. But like, a lot of it is just trusting my friends that are artists. What message do you think the world needs to hear right now? I think that, like, positive Positivity and loving yourself is not enough, even if you're like in a marginalized community. How much of your own comfort are you willing to sacrifice to help somebody around you, to help another person that you don't know, you don't really know anything about that needs it? All right, Maxel, thank you for sharing your life with me. This is my interpretation of your life. Yo! <laughs> thank All you right. so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Keep smiling. <laughs> thank you. So I find all these characters and I just ask them about their life and they just share everything with me. And since then, it's been a year, then all these celebrities wanted to be a part of it. So then I got to interview Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, Will Smith, and two weeks ago I got to do Oprah Winfrey. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, how am I interviewing Oprah? Like, this kind of weird. I'm just the Bronx kid. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> um, and so to artists starting out, my advice would be, utilize the resources you have. You know, like when I first started and I was with Jeremy Harper, all I had was a free Metro card from school and a sketchbook and a pencil. And I feel like a lot of people think they need all these like fancy tools and um, just utilize what you have. Um, also develop your craft. Before I even thought about TikTok, I took 10 years of just practicing and practicing and practicing and I was just really obsessed and um, with just like mastering realism. And then I would say to love what you do. I feel like a lot of people see someone successful at something and they try to copy them and then, but I feel like that leads to burnout. Um, I would do this job for free, for no followers, so um, it keeps me going and I never, you know, get burnt out. Also, I would say to market your work. Um, you could be like the best artist in the world, but if nobody sees it, then you know nobody would really know. So um, what I did is I love storytelling, and I know people like listening to people's stories and people like people's reactions. So um, I found a way to mix my art with other things that are less niche than just realistic portraits. So thank you so much, everyone. This was so fun. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>